beautiful women of the Brain Wave Masterclass. It is Laura Patricia Martin coming to you live for day two. Let me know as you're coming on, is this the replay for you? Is this day one for you? Are you caught, all caught up? And how are you feeling? Just before we got on here, I was scrolling through the, my laptop is on the side, so you see me looking over that way. That's what I'm looking at. I was looking at some of the comments and the homework and y'all. The enlightening and the d discovery and the way that we're reframing things is just beautiful. And that's, uh, that's the whole mission of this, right? Is, is to challenge what we know and what we think and what we have been told to understand on a science level that hits our soul. And this is how things change. And so I'm so, so excited for today because today is all about the energy and the strategy to make this happen. You know, yesterday was all about the why. Now we're going to be addressing the what. Like, what the heck do we do? What foods do we eat? How do we support our bodies so we can better handle stress? I noticed a lot of the things on there had to do with anger and had to do with um, just how do we catch ourselves in that thought. And the reason I didn't answer those in there is because we're covering them in this call today. And so I would love to know, how are y'all feeling today? What are you excited to get out of on our last day together um, and make sure that we have everything covered? Like I said, this group is going to be open until Saturday and then we're going to take everything down. So any questions or anything in there, just drop them in the group and me or my team will answer you guys. If you missed anything, all you have to do is go up to the top of the bar and it'll say guides and you go to the guide section and it will be from there. You could see day one and day two in any of the downloads um, or graphics that we put together that help to recap things or the homework thread to help answer and guide you through this because the biggest thing about this stuff is what do we do after we leave these calls, right? Like homework is one of those things where we can sit and we can watch, but that's basically just TV. What are we doing after we get this information? You know, one of the biggest things that changed for me when I was 24 was now that I knew, know better, I'm gonna do better. And so we're gonna be diving into that and you know, how are we using this homework and how are we moving forward and how do we continue this conversation? And like I said, this is an extension of what we're gonna be covering in Reframe, which is happening next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which is all about how do we recalibrate the gut-brain connection and that is only $44. That price will be increasing tomorrow at 12 p.m. And so that's the extension of this full program. So you would get the whole program for just $44, which is bananas, because we're gonna repurpose it for upwards of 800 next year. Um, and then the Labyrinth is on presale, which is our five-week program. And that is $555 with payment plan available. And I will be discussing that at the end of this call. But if you're ready to dive in, let me know. And let's dive in, shall we? And so one of the biggest things when I was uncovering day two, which is quote, like the theta phase, like when we're in this like zone of, I don't know, dreamland and when we get our great ideas, um, one of the things and the questions that came up was why do many of us choose the same things over and over again? You know, oftentimes we have this glass ceiling in our life where you, we have certain relationships and they go good. But since our vibration and our standard and our worth isn't there yet, we'll self-sabotage. Or we have these jobs and they're really, really good and we hit our upper, upper limit of deserving or threat or whatever it is and we self-sabotage. There's a book by Gay Hendricks where he talks about the upper limiting effect. Great book if you ever want to look into it, but he talks all about this where it's like anytime before a presentation or something you get a cold 
and you know we blame it on the cold but really it was just our thinking thought of we were too scared to do the thing the presentation or what have you and so we got sick and we get in our own way to do things and you see this with money you see this with health you see this with relationships you know money sex power the three things we always want we get in the way of this and specifically when our brains start to get in that arena we don't see it you know it's one of those things we're like oh, or we or we beat ourselves up of like why am i like this why do i always do this to myself why do i always choose the bad guy why do i always self-sabotage my diets on the weekend why do i always you know um i stay up too late watching netflix and i don't sleep like why am i like this what is this cycle and a quote i heard this morning was people only rise above their perception people only rise above their perception of themselves and I want that to like sink in. We only do as good for ourselves as we think we're worthy of. From the way we nourish ourselves, from the way we move our bodies, from the relationships we hold to the people that we surround ourselves in. Hi, Erin. All these things. It's all based on the perception that we have for ourselves. And I know we're here to talk about nutrition, but all of these things matter. Because how you do one thing is how you do everything. And I know for myself, when I look back at my healing journey, I didn't treat myself at all. I didn't mother myself. I didn't take care of myself. I was always the last resort. I never once treated myself like someone I loved. You know, when my anxiety would hit, I'd get mad at her. I'd, I'd tell myself I, you know, was incontrollable of my feelings or... I would make up stories and I'd collapse them in my brain and I'd keep telling these things over and over again and that is anxiety, right? We start obsessive thinking at times. And then we get lost in it and we just perpetuate the story and really, for me, I had a lot of health issues because of my anxiety and we'll get into that as well. Um, we got into that yesterday a little bit too because if our vagus nerve isn't stimulated, anti-inflammatories can't go about and we start our body starts basically attacking itself and going into survival mode. So nutrients start to get depleted. And so I ended up having hyperthyroidism, then hypothyroidism. I lost my period for five years. I had IBS. Um, my hair was falling out in chunks so much so my landlord thought I had a sneaky dog in my apartment and tried to find me for it. Nope. Um, and then I had skin rashes that broke up all over my body. but I never thought to question how all of it was linked together. I always chased, well, I, I chased nutrition and fitness first. That, that was just me. I didn't go towards my mental health. I really shied from that because I didn't want to look at my trauma. I didn't want to look at any of that and I didn't want to take responsibility for it because I thought responsibility meant fault. I thought I was at fault for the abuse, the neglect, the addictions. I thought I was at fault for that. I didn't understand that I wasn't. I was just responsible for how I continued that cycle. And maybe you guys can agree to that. Maybe you cannot, or you've had something similar in your life where it's like, oh yeah, I definitely get in my own on the own way on this thing. And so as we start to navigate these things, it's you know we're, we're stuck in these states of being because we were taught these by the age of seven. You know, we usually only look back to like the last few years, but really the habits that we have today formed by the age that we were seven years old because our brain still couldn't make cognitive arousal function at that time. And we're still trapped, not trapped, but we're still in the delta and theta stages of our life, which is our brain isn't firing and wiring as it once was. And so as a kid, say we're four years old, right? We're going with mom to the store. And just like marketing, because we love, if you know anything about marketing and psychology of marketing, they put all the things right at checkout, just at the child's eyesight, because that's who they're marketing to. And so your four-year-old self looks at your mom and asks for the toy. She said no. But, as all children are, persistence takes in and you go, oh, well, please, but please, but please, but please, let me, let me, please, 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 please
absolutely not. You have not been a good girl today. Put that away. You don't deserve it. <laughs> Crying takes over. But you don't know, as a kid, that your mom's struggling with her finances. The relationship with your father is on the rocks. And her work is a miserable place to work at. And so she's in her brain in that line, thinking of all these things. And this kid, her kid, comes in whining, wanting something. And so although she says these things just to get her kid from stop pulling on her jacket and to, you know, stop doing this whole thing so she can get back to thinking of a solution and back to her big girl problems. But your little four-year-old self is sitting there going, I'm not worthy of this toy. I'm not deserving of this toy. I'm a, I'm a bad girl. And that gets locked into our prefrontal cortex. And it's, it stays there. And as life starts to evolve, disappointments start to take action, as they do. And we start to build our boundaries and our scope and our, our perception of who what we're worthy of. And so as we start to make our choices in our life, we choose in alignment to that. You know, for me, now that I'm an older woman, and I, older woman, older um, person that is a woman, um, I now, I'm able to understand why my mom was the way that she was. And I have, I've never told this story actually, but my mom was insanely strict, insane. I had tracking devices, I had leashes, I had doors flipped inside out. It was, now I look back and I was like, whoo, what the heck? And so as a kid, I fought tooth and nail. I was so mean, so angry, Felt like I was so misunderstood. My older brother got to do whatever he wanted. The freedom, he had all this kind of stuff. I had like an 8 p.m. curfew. He could do whatever the heck he wanted. I was grounded every Tuesday because I batted an eyelash funny. Like it was this whole thing in my family. I was very misconstrued. Don't worry. We have dealt with all of this and we are perfectly fine. My brother and my dad are my best friends now. Um, but thank goodness. But my whole life I felt misunderstood because I was depressed and anxious. And I felt no one understood me. And I was an empath, so I felt a lot of things in my body. I had eating disorders because I never felt I was belong, and never felt like I could belong somewhere, so I took it out with food. And my obsession with food and athletics and fitness and this whole thing. And I built this narrative around my life that I'm not worthy, I can't be trusted, I don't know how to do things, I need men in my life to fix stuff and all the other things that were painted in my mind because of the way I was raised. That women can't be trusted. And I grew up very angry, resentful because of this. Not only at my mother, once I hit a certain age, but at myself. I was so angry at myself. Not for the way that I treated my mom, that I couldn't trust me. I kept breaking my own word to myself. I kept obsessing about things. I blew off the handle. Violence was my go-to. Like, I had zero emotional control. And so I'd get stuck in these emotional responses, not knowing that this was formed as a habit. It didn't make it true. It was formed as a habit, like many of us have. Maybe not to that extent maybe to different things, but how many times have we said to ourselves, it's just what I do. Is it just what you do? Or is it just what you've been trained to do or shown to do or been in the environment of? You know, we rise only above the perception we have for ourselves. We can't rise above that. We can't 
you know, these positive affirmations and these things, yes, that's that yesterday when I was talking about the circumstantial stuff, that's that circumstantial arena. But if you're saying all these positive affirmations, but you're in an abusive relationship or you chose a friend group that isn't the best or you have lifestyle, like, and you're in this environment where they're saying it's not gonna work, your environment's gonna win, unfortunately. And we're gonna get into environments and circumstances and things like that later in mastery. But when we actually start to realize like, okay, so my conscious thinking, right? We only actually have 5% of our conscious thought. 95% of it is unconscious thinking. We live day to day through habits, responses to things, moving, driving, all these kind of things. We live in this like theta stage of our life, unconscious to what's going on. We're only reactive when something happens and throws us out of it, but we get in the, we wake up, we drink our coffee, probably don't have breakfast, go to work, do the same tedious thing at work, come home, clean the house, take care of the kids, watch some TV and Netflix and maybe have some wine, go to bed and do the same thing. We built up these things in our lives and we're in these theta stages and then we blow off the handle sometimes because we're not realizing what's under the iceberg you know we're staring in like the titanic right like that's just an ice cube and you're like no nah, i think it's a little bit a little bit like something under there but in your head you're like mm, no i think it's just an ice cube i think it's just Anxiety and my anger and just the emotional things. I think it's, it's just the ice cube. <sighs> then something happens and we lose all emotional control. And we realize it was not the fact that the kids didn't put their socks in the bin. It was the fact that our nervous system has been stuck in this thing for a very long time. And she never found balance. And this is why I say all the time, anxiety is a symptom. And it goes so much further than only nutrition and only lifestyle and only these little things. It is the 95% that's underneath all of this. And how do we heal it? And so oftentimes you get the question, like, why am I stuck in this vicious cycle? And I saw a lot, so we'll talk about that. But why is it, you know, anger? Why am I stuck in this vicious cycle of anger where I just blow off the handle and I don't see the positives and my family wants the old me back? Like, I, why am I stuck in this? Because you're stuck in a habit. And as our, and I saw a lot of the comments of, like, I need to think more positively, and I love that. But our brains are trained to seek out the bad. Our amygdala, the space, that's what media is trained to speak to. This is why most news is bad news, because it spikes us up in our brain, and it's like, dee, 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 ah. this is why when you hear stories of sadness, you relate to those more. Because it spikes your amygdala, and it stimulates it, and we like it, and it gives us this, like, dopamine hit, and it's like, mm. Turn it up. Whereas if I were to tell you a story about how much I freaking love my life. And my boyfriend's the bee's freaking knees. And my friends are the best friends in the world. We don't get as stimulated by that. And so over time, our brains are literally trained to seek out bad And our amygdala and the way it communicates with the rest of our body it goes into these just habit forming creations right so because of where we at we're at seven years old right and it's proceeded over life we've been disappointed like we it's just like a guarantee in life we're gonna be freaking disappointed that's just the way it works but we don't try new things 
because of this. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll try diets, we'll try things, we'll move outside of stuff, we'll do this kind of stuff, but we don't often go for the big things, right? We don't, we don't look at the character things. We usually do the small stuff, diets, fitness plan, things of that things, but then the vicious cycle comes. It only lasted two weeks. And I wasn't strict enough. I'll try next New Year's. Not realizing that we're still disappointed even though we're in that moment. You know, so we don't try new things because we're afraid of being disappointed. We have this fear. And as women, our biggest fear is disappointment. That's why we don't do things. That's why we play small. That's why we don't speak out in meetings. That's why we don't... All the things. We don't want to be disappointed. I did it for years. It's okay. Because we're trained. We're trained disappointment things, and this is our scope of genius, and this is our um, breaking point and our glass ceiling, and this is where it's at, so we can't go beyond it, and here's we stay put. And so whenever things get good, we self-sabotage. It's okay. Because the one cool thing about our brain, it is built on being programmable. It's the coolest thing. You know, I talked about yesterday being um, the part of the neuroplasticity and different fire and wires. Our brain is programmed to be programmable like this is why environments matter this is why the people we surround ourselves with matter our nutrition matters all that kind of stuff because our brain and you maybe experience this right where you used to always choose french fries always no matter what always chose it but then you did whole 30 one day say you're like i'm gonna actively with my 5% brain choose a salad for these 30 days so your brain's like whoa what's this never been here before cool and all of a sudden you're normally choosing these things sure sometimes you just want the french fries but your natural state is this one new thing that you keep choosing we've all had different habits we've picked up I don't think and maybe you're new to habits, maybe. But I think if you're in my world, we have some habit things that we do, whether it's athletics, whether it's nutrition, whether it's spirituality, whether it's finances, we have habits that have been constructive. And now it just becomes this cruising. This is why in the methods that I teach, F-R-E-E, -E, the free, acronym free, the last one is evolve because the habits just become a part of our lives and that's the cool thing whether it's anxiety whether it's depression management whether it's food sensitivities all that kind of stuff it just becomes steady motion which i freaking find amazing and so one of the things why we get stuck though and why things don't succeed is one we hit our upper limit and two timing We get to two weeks and we're like, why don't I feel better yet? Why don't I have emotional... I watched Laura for one hour. Why am I still anxious? I ate sushi. Why am I still anxious? And so we give up and we stop trying. Like, could you imagine? Like popcorn, for instance. You bought a bag of popcorn. I heard this example one time and I loved it. Bought a bag of popcorn. Put it in the microwave. Three minutes and 30 seconds. Ding! Nothing's happening. It's been. It's been a minute and there's... Of course I get the broken popcorn. What the heck? Thing's broken. It's not working. And so you keep opening it, closing it, starting it again. 
I get the broken popcorn bag. <laughs> Call the company up. Excuse me, you got me a broken popcorn. So they send you a replacement. And they go, please keep the door shut this time. So you put the popcorn in the microwave. Three minutes, 30 seconds. They sent me another broken popcorn? What the heck? It gets to like one minute, 45 seconds. What the freaking heck? And then all of a sudden you hear, boop. Great, they gave me a popcorn that has one, one kernel. Five more seconds goes by. This thing is broken. Like two kernel. What the heck? Finally, it gets to like three minutes, and mind you, I don't know how long popcorn goes in my. I don't know if three minutes is too long. Whatever. You get the point of the story. It gets to three minutes, twenty three seconds, and all of a sudden, it's. My popcorn's not broken. What the heck? We don't give things enough time. We keep wanting to peek. We keep wanting to open the door, let the heat out. We forget that things compound over time. And even just doing 1% better, like showing up to this, like paying attention by realizing it's not genetics, by taking into consideration the nutrition and the, the habits and the things that we spoke, we've spoken about or are going to speak about. It's compounded over time. But we have to stop thinking it's not working. Just because you now are aware of anxiety and catching thoughts and how it works in our body on a science level and the gut brain connection and the vagus nerve and things like that doesn't mean you're never gonna pop off at your partner <clears throat> I still get triggered by things with all this <clears throat> but now I can feel it <clears throat> I get some water <clears throat> I don't know why I put my water so far either. But now I can feel it in my body <clears throat> without it feeling like everything is going away. You know, I don't get stuck in this thought. And I thought a beautiful question that was asked by a cell of how do you choose something different when you can't seem to control the feelings that come up once anxiety kicks in? How many of you feel the same way? And I don't know if there's comments being had right now. I can't see anything. Um, but let me know if you have ever felt the same way. Like, how, how on earth can I choose something different when anxiety is just like, whoa. Well, the thing is, that's not how our brain works. Our brain can't fix itself when we're in the fight or flight. When we're in the trigger, we're in the trigger. The work happens outside of it. What are you doing day in and day out that helps you feel safe, that is raising that bar, that is heightening the perception you have? Something I talk a lot about inside the labyrinth is setting a new standard <clears throat> for your life and holding yourself accountable to that. What are you doing day in and day out to set that new thing? When you're in something and you're having a panic attack and it's going on, this is why it's having people around and they talk to you and, you know, I'm even doing it right now. I'm like, <laughs> it's just these calming things that bring you stillness and you breathe deep and the people around you can support you and they get you out of it. I 
but it doesn't happen in it. When our body is healing from inflammation, we do that work day in and day out, and our body can then handle the stressors in our life. The thing is, our, like I used to get panic attacks when I was excited because our body doesn't know the difference between fear and excitement, unfortunately. And so I'd be like happy as Larry and all of a sudden, poof, zone, heart palpit, like it. Our body doesn't know. And so the work outside of that is we have to stop putting the wrong things in. Okay, so the questions I always get asked, what foods do I eat and what foods do I avoid? Let's check timing. Okay. So we have to stop putting the wrong things in and this goes beyond nutrition. But since we're here for nutrition, processed foods, that is a I feel by now a given in our life. If we have anxiety, we really got to pay attention to our nutrition. Our brain weighs one fiftieth of our entire body, but consumes 20% of our calories. That's how freaking powerful she is. But I know, I know when we're anxious, we either aren't hungry or we emotionally eat and depressed. Both things happen. So cooking is like the last thing we want to do and fast food's easy and things out of a box are easy and all these kind of things. But let's go back to the first point I made. Treat yourself like someone you love. If your little sister was having a panic attack, what would you be doing? How would you treat her? If you were in my home and you were anxious and oh my goodness, pillows and all the kind of things would be all around. We'd have nutrient food. We'd be sitting there. And even though if you're not hungry, I'd be like, we got to balance those blood sugar levels out because that's what's happening right now. Your blood sugar is too sensitive. And so when you get excited or you get emotional or you feel something or you're triggered by something and you feel anger, whatever it is in your body, it's going to explode because your blood sugar isn't balanced. Nutrition is one of the main forms of getting Yes, therapy. Yes, going outside and things like that. But nutrition is one of the first gateways to helping get this balanced. And so if we can remove things that aren't meant to be there, it changes. Like I used to only eat fast food and lean cuisines and frozen meals and I don't know, McDonald's ice cream cones. I freaking loved them. Um, My body genuinely... Elvis still eats this way, right? But I just genuinely sit there and I'm like, I have zero interest in that. Like, I'm not even... He likes to play a game where he, like, shoves it in my face. And I'm like, it's not that even a diet purpose. Like, I just genuinely... I'll eat chicken wings and tacos all day long. But, like, I'm just not... I treat myself like someone I love. And you have that proper... Like, you get that choice with everything you put into your mouth. And also when we, polyunsaturated fats is a huge inflammatory for the brain. And so polyunsaturated fats, vegetable oils, canola oil. You know, they're gonna be in everything. You're gonna notice that if you start reading labels, please don't become anxious and obsessed with it. This is your PSA. It's in everything. It is literally in everything. But we can do our best to not have it in our home for the foods we put in. Or if we go out to eat, we can ask the waiter. I ask them, I go, can you at least bake it? Or can you steam it? Or can you use butter? If they say no, I go, great. I have backup plans and my body can handle a little bit of it. But like, we gotta ask the questions and we gotta avoid them. And so when it comes to vegetable oils, just swap them out. Get avocado oil, get olive oil, get coconut oil, use butter. You're good. You're safe. You always have been. Your brain is just trying to tell you she needs a little bit more love. 
You can't love her through fake shit. She don't like that. She's not gonna be a fan. She's gonna piss you off more. <laughs> she's gonna show up and she's gonna go, mm mm. And this is a big one because, again, the way we eat and the way we were trained, and the way our emotional responses and the way we nourish ourselves all need to be reprogrammed. This is definitely a big thing we talk of inside of the labyrinth and how to rechange things and reprogram and start to rebuild this archive for ourselves because it is, it's foreign land for a lot of people. Unless we work in the health industry and you know, I've always been this way, but a lot of people, it's not, I don't know a lot of, like a lot of my friends don't cook. That's why like Happy Fresh is so popular nowadays. People are like, get back in the kitchen, please. Let's go. Like, it's these huge things happening, and I'm a huge fan for it, but it is something with our brain, our prefrontal cortex, the 5% above the water. We have to be active in changing these things. This is not something just because you watch this live, it's going to change for you. We have to take personal responsibility for our lives. We have to change things, we have to move through things, we have to level it up. So you feel like maybe you're thinking like, but I don't wanna talk to the waiter about the oils in my dishes. Okay, wait till you're comfortable with that. Do you wanna swap them out at your house though? Yeah, I could do that. But I hate cooking. Do you love anxiety? There's, there's so many things nowadays. You can get meal delivery service. You can get Happy Fresh. You can get imperfect foods. Make a stir fry. So easy. Quickest way to get in there. Throw things in a pan. Use butter. Use water, use coconut oil, use avocado oil. Do not cook with olive oil. It has a low flash point. But it is one of the best brain foods, so dribble, drizzle that shit on your vegetables all the time. It's so good for you. <sighs> Second thing is, is start putting in the right things. So when we have anxiety, you know, we talked about yesterday, the science and the soul and things like that. Our minerals get so depleted, specifically like vitamins and things like that. And our adrenals need to be supported. This is why we get super tired. Um, we don't really feel, we have that tired but wired feeling. Um, we have things like digestive issues. We don't sleep well, maybe hormonal imbalances, maybe skin issues, uh, maybe have very weak nails and hair because our body is sending everything to our muscles and our organs and it is not going to our brain and the things we need the non-essentials essentially and so things you can start adding back in putting in the right stuff magnesium selenium vitamin a b c d e k zinc and the roadblock I see with this is oftentimes you will probably repeat that back replay it write it down and order all of that off the internet if you know anything about my world we don't do that yes at certain times we need supplements great but we take a nutrition forward approach and we start with whole foods first and then if your body still isn't adapting and needs a little bit up a little booster while you start to navigate this world until she gets to be calm cool and collected and heal herself she might need supplements but for now no so what does this look like for my selenium i take a brazil nut in the morning for my magnesium for my zinc for all my vitamins i eat organ meats i mean 
let's be fair, I do not eat organ meats. I order that as a supplement, but it's not like I'm ordering all those different ones. They, they sell desiccated organ meats that you can take in pill form because I personally don't like to eat them, but I can get them that way. And it helps to support your body. It helps to replenish. It helps her know she's safe. For omega-3 fatty acids and the healthy fats, because our brain is made up of 60% fat. Majority of that is omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are essential fatty acids, meaning we don't make them on our own. We have to eat them. So, and they get to stake me on a sushi date twice a week. If that's not an option, cook fatty fish at home. This could be salmon, tuna, mackerel, sardines, all the things. Instead of a multivitamin, I get oysters once a week. Those things are banging as a multivitamin, especially for mental health and especially for zinc, selenium, and magnesium, which is what we're deficient in when we have, and vitamin D, when we have anxiety and depression. The foods we eat can either help us or harm us. The choices we make, the things we surround ourselves in, they all impact us. And sometimes you might be saying, yeah, but my family doesn't eat that way. Yeah, but I don't like fish. Yeah, but I don't eat meat. We get a choice in our personal power and healing. We can say, yeah, but our entire freaking life doesn't really get us that far. I wasn't this way my whole life. I was anxious, underfed, overworking out, depressed, suicidal surrounding myself with drinking and partying and in environments I definitely wasn't belonging in. Just to try to make sense of the world. And I always use the phrase, yeah, but. Use your personal power. Our taste buds can be trained. So if you don't like fish, they can be trained. I used to hate kimchi, and I used to hate natto, and I used to hate all these kind of things that are really good for us. I used to hate them. Now my body genuinely craves them. I still can't get around organ meats unless it's a stew. I will not lie about that. But it's just the texture. Like, it has nothing to do with the actual flavor. I kind of like the flavor because it absorbs everything, and, and you can taste, like, the rich iron in it, but it's, like, it's very gamey. I don't like it. Not my, not my thing. But... I take the capsules because it's important to me, especially as I'm still trying to work on balancing my hormones because of the crap my freaking anxiety did to my cortisol levels. <sighs> but we're looking at this. We're looking for cooked dark colored veggies. Go to the grocery store. Is it dark colored? Get it, cook it. Cooking it is easier to digest. Organ meats, meats in general, we need them. There's just things we can't get from plants. And I'm sorry if you're vegan. I'm not your girl. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids, need them. Root vegetables, carbs, we need them so our liver stops freaking out and producing over sources of cortisol and sugar in our body and starts giving us these anxiety and panic attacks and anger and all this kind of stuff. It's these little things. And I'm not saying overhaul your diet tomorrow. This is definitely something we expand very deep inside of inside of the um, labyrinth. Because it gets to be fluid. And when you do these things, like I said, my, like the things with my clients, like they add these things in and it's, again, it's evolution over time, but the labyrinth is five weeks and girls have gone through it and they're like, I am talking to my doctor about coming off my medication. <clears throat> Excuse me, what? <clears throat> Not because they're walking pharmacies, but they learned how to nourish themselves and treat themselves like someone they love and they've removed themselves from toxic environments and they started to focus on the things that they loved and they started to take responsibility for their triggers and start to work on the neuroplasticity. 
and create the new habits and build things from a place of love, not fear, not from a space of feeling like we don't belong or that we lack worthiness or we're undeserving, but to sit in that when we hit our glass ceiling and we like peek over the edge and you're like, anyone like me in there? And so you peek over and you realize when your self-sabotaging starts to kick in and you're so uncomfortable when you're sitting there. And then it starts to get comfortable. And your glass ceiling rises again and you peek over the, don't want to look me on there. Hmm. And you just keep going. The way we emotionally respond to things isn't our truth. It's just our current truth. Our thoughts make up our reality. It doesn't mean it's real. The inflammation in our brain, she will do tricky shit. Sorry if your children are around, but she will. She tells a story, she convinces us it's true, and we continue on the story, and it's just not. We have to take out the bad things, whether it's food, or people, or media, or habits, or things. We have to be active in removing them because they're affecting the thing that's underneath the iceberg. They're the thing that's weighing us down. If we sit and we think something's gonna come and things are gonna happen and change and we're gonna stop making poor choices and dating shitty men and we're gonna be super lean and have all this magic energy one day in the future <clears throat> but we're not doing anything other than listening to stuff we're not taking action we're not moving forward the pendulum we're not getting outside of our boundary nothing can change like I said watching this stuff is fan freaking tastic but what happens after? Who are we after? And that's why the third step is we have to get things that shouldn't be in our life out. This is why coaches and mentors and people are so, so important and really good friends and sisterhood and therapists and all these kind of things because we don't see our shadow. We don't see it. <clears throat> I had a whole team around me when I started this. I still have a whole team around me. It's just changed. Because I've changed and that's the way it works. Because when I first started, I was partying and using drugs. I was in love with a drug dealer who was not very kind to me or my body. I was 40 pounds underweight with health issues that would make my doctors scratch their head in mystery. But I chose to change the way my brain worked. To treat myself like someone I loved a little bit more each day. It didn't happen overnight. I stayed with that man for a long time. Until I built the trust in myself. And so wherever you're at, Breathe. It takes time. It's evolution and growth over a lifetime. It is not tomorrow. Such amazing insight today. Thank you so much. I love you, Erin. I freaking love you. Thank you for that. <sighs> but we change and we grow and we... When we start to treat ourselves in a way... You start like starting someone you love. Treat yourself like someone you like or you respect. You don't even have to like you. A phrase I always say is like, I always love myself. I don't necessarily like her in this moment. And that's okay. I still respect myself to do the shit that needs to get done. To keep myself in line, to eat the way I need to eat, to do the things I need to do. Sometimes, do I want to do stupid things because the old thing inside? Yes. Sometimes, do you want to know? I get the cravings. I'm like, oh, I just want to go party. Yo, I go to bed at like 8 p.m. No, I don't. And I, <clears throat> thank goodness for, because now I have the best friends around me and things like that and the best partner because he'll sit there. I'll like say it to Elvis. I'm like, let's go party. And he's like, you don't actually want to do that. 
Like, that's old Laura right now. That is not you. And I'm like, yeah. I just want to go drink Prosecco on a patio. <laughs> like, it's like, <clears throat> it's these things that we convince ourselves. These are us. But really, it's so uncomfortable when we shift our identity. And honestly, I've given myself different names over a lifetime. Like, I created my business. I was Laura from Healing the Happy. Now, you'll see on Instagram, it's Laura Patricia Martin. Because now, it's Laura Patricia Martin. These silly little things help us make sense of a world that feels like it spins too fast. But when we move forward and we make sense and we take radical responsibility and we do the things we deserve, so much changes. And our body stops fighting ourselves. Nutrition comes easy. Relationships and choosing the good guy comes easy. Being able to hold emotional space for our children and be the example of how communication is held, how emotions are held, how it's safe to feel. These things happen when we change. We become the women we're meant to be. We, we evolve into these lifestyles that I literally have chills on my body because it's so true. Like the women in my world and the people that I see, it's so freaking true. It makes my heart leap. Because where you're at right now, you're not stuck. You never were. It's you've been false, fed a false narrative and your amygdala was like, Bee! yay! Latch onto it, because we are stimulated with that negativity. And because we've learned how to belong or that we're worthy or we fear disappointment because of the age we were seven, and it's locked in the iceberg of our brain and our subconscious. But that gets to change. That 5%, we get to switch it. Yes, we're going to have subconscious things. I get triggered very often very often I've had things but the thing is my triggers don't not, no longer have triggers if that makes sense there are things Elvis said a girl's name the other day oh <clears throat> you bet my sweet bottom dollar I had to go take a walk and then I came back and he was like that was a guy's name <laughs> do anything like it's just the thing i was like i need to go get some like like I need to go move and he had no idea what happened and god bless his soul he's like she'll coach herself through this like whatever the heck that was like she'll be fine and i come back yesterday and he's like that's a guy <laughs> the whole thing <laughs> and he just sits there and he just laughs like it's, it's it doesn't have to be as serious as we make it we only compound our negative emotions and our anger and the way that we do things because of the narrative we're telling our stories and because our body internally is inflamed and doesn't feel safe. So when something feels like it's attacking us and we're triggered and someone says a name, we're not gonna have the wherewithal to handle that because stress in our body is seen as cortisol, right? So cortisol is a stress hormone that raises our blood sugar levels. This is why blood sugar levels, metabolism, the gut brain connection, all the kind of stuff are intertwined, right? And this is all what labyrinth is about. This is how we stabilize things, okay? And so when we have a small trigger that shouldn't set things off because our body is already dysregulated in so many ways, some girl's name can go bah, and can set off the whole freaking thing. But because I've done the work, <laughs> healed the gut brain connection, I've healed the, tra I mean, I do a lot of trauma work, a lot. Um, I've had a lot of big T trauma in my life, so I've had a lot of that stuff as well, but for things around that. I've rebalanced my metabolism, like I have a consistent cycle, I sleep well, not recently, but usually my skin's perfect, um, hormones, libido, digestion, all the things are fabulous. Now, yes, I'm triggered, but my trigger doesn't have a trigger, so it doesn't trigger a response. That just is me being like, wow, my internal body feels very warm from that. I'm gonna go for a walk. Like, what the heck was that? And I come back and we come up. It doesn't have to be this weight. You always hit the nail on the head. You give raw and needed advice. I love you, hey. Thank you. I'm so happy you're here. And so I just wanted to 
cover all of that today that yes the way we eat and the things that we need i will repeat the foods magnesium selenium basically all the vitamins vitamin a k or let's do it in alphabetical order a b c d e k okay but that does not mean we go out and we get these in zinc and healthy fats omega-3 fatty acids that's just food baby girls that is just real whole deep hearty foods not salads and smoothies and yogurts and things like that that we often think is health the lighter foods the deep nourishing foods and we're moving into fall so this is actually a pretty smooth transition because these are the common foods play around with them track take note join me inside of um reframe because that's what i'm walking through is the foundations and how we actually do that what does that mean? How do we actually recalibrate? How do we actually do this now? That's the beginner right there. And so if you're complete for today, thank you for being here. Time is the most valuable thing that we have. And I know I say that every time, but it's so true. And it does not pass me that y'all show up and you give your time to me. Like I'm going to get teary eyed because it means so much. And know that you have so much strength because you're here. You have determination because you're here. You signed up. You were active in it. That is such a celebration. And I hope some point in today you are celebrating the fact that you did that. Because that's huge. There are people that see things and want change and do nothing. And so I'm going to move into talking about reframe and talking about labyrinth. But if that is it for today, I hope to see you on the internet. I hope you're inside of our free Facebook group where we continue conversations like this. But so next week, we have a three-day training. Training meaning we're going to do the how-to when it comes to this. How do we recalibrate our gut-brain connection? How do we, you know, track and get to our foundation so that these things st so our triggers stop having triggers how do we do that what are the steps what, it, what is the play-by-play -play here so that i can actually feel supported and do these kind of things and so that is for three days monday tuesday wednesday october 4th october 5th october 6th and october 4th or october 5th is my birthday yes i just messed up my birthday my birthday is october 5th um and so we'll be celebrating in the name of gratitude and that is only 44 dollars y'all like, I love it. And so this is, again, going to be the how-to. And you guys will have lifetime access to it. And I, if you go to the post that I posted yesterday, you can just click there, get the link. The price for this will be increasing tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you want to get in, let me know. And then Labyrinth, which is honestly my favorite program to go through my favorite it's it's something that has been clawing at my soul to birth for so long and it finally came to life this last session and it's live just like this it's not pre-recorded um and we walk through the series of unraveling the triggers finding your way home to yourself how do we navigate treating ourselves like someone we love so that our nervous system feels safe enough to heal we use science, we use nutrition, we use so much soul. It is such a safe and sacred place of sisterhood, of realizing you are not alone in this. It is the journey, like I get to go through, I love it because I go through it. I do all the modules, I do all the homework and I can't tell you what happens in my life. Like my relationship, I've never felt more loved after going through this program and the way Elvis treats me and the way like yesterday after that trigger and him showing up and like, his emotional response is just beautiful because of the work that I've done inside of this program. It's the emotional response. It's not just for us, right? It, it's for the people around us and how we show up. And, you know, I know Lindsay said yesterday of like, her family just wants the old her back. And I relate to that. It's, it's a beautiful thing when we actually navigate these things and down-regulate our nervous system to heal in a natural way. 
And like I said, the women that have gone through this program, it's like within five weeks, they're already talking to other doctors about coming off the medication. And so this is a five week journey. We start the third week of October. October 18th, I believe that is. I can't check right now, but I believe that Monday is October 18th. And we go for five weeks. And we have calls every Tuesday. And you get access to the replays for 30 days after our last call. But you get access to a lifetime for the downloads and the guides so you can keep referring to them and the recipes and the things like that. You get full access. And so that program is $555 for now. That price will also be increasing tomorrow at 12, 30, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then if you wanted to do a bundle with the Gut Recharge and Labyrinth, that is $999 and then the one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I'm not going to bombard you with things. If you want to learn more about that, we can have a chat. The two things I want to emphasize because I think they go perfectly with this masterclass is the Reframe Masterclass that's happening next week and then the Labyrinth which Reframe is for, for $44 and the Labyrinth is 555. Both of those will be increasing on Friday. But that is it for this training and this series and for Brainwave and I just wanna thank you beautiful ladies for all of it, for the awareness, for the connection, for the honesty, for the vulnerability and for the transition through this. I'm so proud of you. Take time today to celebrate the fact that you showed up, that you did this work, that you're diving in, because that is no easy step. And I love you. Come hang out in our Facebook group so we can continue this conversation. And I will see you somewhere on the internet. Happy healings.